Joining us now on the Eagle Eye podcast, our buddy from NBC Sports, Chris Sims. Chris, how are you? I'm doing good, guys. Always good to talk to you. How are you guys? We're doing, doing well. well, and we, we have to start here. I think you know where this is going. You're talking oh, to the guys from Oh, we're going to start Philly. with Jalen Hurts. That's we? where we're we're have, we have to do Hurts. it, Chris. We Shocker. have to do it. I'm really yeah. shocked. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, so we let's let's give the background. Back when you put out your, your top 40 quarterbacks list, he was not on there. And then you admitted you took an L on it. Right. But that was before the playoff game when he did not play very well. So as we sit here now in February, where are you on Jalen Hurts? Well, I, I took an L on it. Like I should have had a top on the top 40. There's no doubt about that. I, I was wrong too. I think the reason I didn't have him on the top 40 is some of the things you're talking about. Those are my concerns. Still my concerns going forward. Hey, I agree with, you know, the Eagle standpoint of that Jalen Hurts did enough this year, certainly to come back and be the starter and be that guy. There's no doubt about that. And again, if they can continue to orchestrate an offense that fits him. One of the things I talked about early in the year when I was with the Eagles is I go, I just, I didn't understand the approach a little bit. You know, you can go back and look at my podcast or what I even say with Florio is going, but they got this great offensive line. They got a quarterback who's a good athlete. You know, he's not a surgical Drew Brees type passer. He's not that. I don't understand why they're trying to play this Phillip Rivers, Los Angeles Chargers type offense with a guy that doesn't fit that. It was a little bit of the, you know, the round peg in the square hole thing where they changed around the season and changed around Jalen Hurts. It's just they played to the strength of their football team, which is one of the best offensive lines in football. You play through that. You got a few quarterback design runs with Jalen Hurts. You got some guys on the outside. When you do play one-on-one, they can run by you. And now you play that type of football game. That fits Jalen Hurts. It does. And I would expect the Eagles to continue to go down that route of, that type of offense, Lamar Jackson-ish, right, if you want to say, for lack of a better phrase. But my concern still holds true in the fact that it's hard to go through the playoffs and win and just play that style of football. You're going to play some defenses or some of the topper quality teams in football, as you guys know, that are going to have a good front four, some linebackers, and all of a sudden, wait, we can't run the ball. We got to – we got to – get some six and eight yard and 12 yard completions and start being surgical. And that, yes, there's still meat on the bone, in my opinion, as far as the evaluation there with Jalen Hurts. You guys saw the playoff game. You saw a number of other games, I think, during the year where you probably would have had the same type of questions where you just go, man, if they got to pass the ball, can they really rely on him and the passing game to get it done? And I think that's still a question for me. What do you need to see from him? And, and what do you think his ceiling is as far as being a passer, a guy who can uh, make enough throws to, to be a successful quarterback in the NFL? Right. I, I, I you know, again, I'm, I'm going to, again, I, I really love the kid. Okay. So I'm going to qualify this and I don't root against anybody. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I call myself out. I self scout myself all the time. It's part of my podcast. I don't expect to be right about everything that goes on in football. I study hard. I work hard about it. I work hard. You know, he has a great way. He's got leadership skills. But am I like, yeah, when I tell you I'm concerned about him throwing, I'm talking about big picture. The mechanics of his throwing, they're not not what I would call top notch. He's got a long delivery. He doesn't have great arm speed. He doesn't throw great spirals like you saw in the playoff game. So then the wind affects it and blows it up and it doesn't go where you want that way. You know, there's not a great power in the arm to throw 20 yard out routes or squeezing a ball. So th those are the things that, yes, they, he's got to, he's got to tweak some things with his throwing motion for sure to get better. You know, to me, it's different where, you know, people will go, well, Lamar, J I get a lot of like, well, Lamar Jackson, that's their follow-up. And I go, well, Lamar Jackson to me is just a, a far more gifted thrower of the football than Jalen Hurts. Lamar Jackson is got a really strong arm and can whip it around sidearm and do he's a little more dynamic that way. You guys see Jalen Hurts, it's very deliberate and a really like the arm kind of works by itself. He doesn't get his body involved at times. And those are some of the things that, you know, concern me a little. Chris, I think some teams worry about ending up in this like quarterback purgatory where they have an okay player, a good player you can kind of build around, but he's never going to be that elite player. Is that kind of where you see the Eagles? And if you're right. them, like, what do you do here? I mean, do you have three first round picks or any of these quarterbacks viable options? Do you try to trade for someone? It's a tough thing to figure out. 
It is tough. It do, It is. I do think to your point, teams sometimes don't cut the cord quick enough in some of these type of like situations, like the Rams with Jared Goff. You know, again, they got pressured into a corner there with a guy that was, you know, a high draft pick. He's from California. They knew he wasn't that great, but the team was winning. And they went, okay, we'll give you a big contract, even though you're probably not one of the top 28 quarterbacks in football. Like that's that's what they did. You know, and and yes, you know, you can win. You don't, it's not always about the quarterback. So I do think teams at times are a little too scared to cut the cord. I would not cut the cord in this scenario. I would not. I still think we saw enough potential and positivity from Hertz, the way the offense looked, to think, wait, you know, hopefully we can work on some of those mechanical issues we talked about. We can continue to make him a better thrower. He'll, of course, it's only year three. He's going to get better. He's playing more football. He's going to get used to the NFL game. But to me, what I would also do off of that is just, I wouldn't be looking at the draft right now and cause problems there. I mean, damn, what do we want? Car- Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts part two, to where we just throw everything in the organization up in the curveball. Don't do that. Let, let this play out. Go all in on this style of play and see if you can continue to kind of grow him into a more effective passer. Again, I don't ever expect him to be Josh Allen or, or Aaron Rodgers, but if you can just get, you know, get towards a spot where, okay, teams can't just overplay us and we have a good enough passing game to where they have to respect it, they'll be tough to defend with that offensive line. You got to get another running back there in Philadelphia and maybe one more receiver to add to the group. So you can run fake speed sweeps and fake reverses and really get people moving out of position. And then it's, oh, Jalen Hurts is running the ball over here and we're pulling a guard and the tailback. You can do a lot of creative things that way. And that's why I wouldn't give up on this Jalen Hurts thing. I hope I answered your question there. I know I talked a lot. What if Russell Wilson becomes available? Well, those are that's that's a different story, right? I mean, yeah, that that to me is a game changing type of player, organization type of you know changing type of player. Uh, I certainly wouldn't get rid of Jalen Hurts for draft pick to Dave's question or some other low level starter in the NFL. But okay, now wait, Deshaun Watson's back on the table, Russell Wilson. You know, let's just say Aaron Rodgers, right, who I think is going to try to get out of Green Bay. Uh, I think that's one where you, now if you're Philadelphia, you go, okay, wait, we like Jalen Hurts, but, you know, I'm not sure. This, this, these group of guys we just talked about there, you know, they're special players. They're elite. They, they can change your team. They can do the things we talked about where, oh, wait, we can't run the ball. We're not protecting that good. Nobody's that open today. Oh, it doesn't really matter. We, we Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers still got a 20 yard completion, still got a first down. You know, we're not even playing our best football. That's what a superstar quarterback does. He can cover some of the holes in your team if you're injured, not playing your best. And that is, uh, if that comes about, uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking about that pretty seriously there. Chris, I wanted to ask you about Devontae Smith. We watched him as a rookie do some really good things. Overall, I think he had 916 yards, so a really strong start. When you watch him, what stands out the most to you? His, his, his feet with his burst, right? His ability to get off jam and, you know, pitter-patter the feet and move and then accelerate up the field, it's as good as anybody in the sport. That's where he's really special. I mean, he, he can make a move you know, get a guy off balance and accelerate and be a step ahead of them. And then it's over, you know, as good as anybody in the sport. So that's where I really love him. I do. He's got game breaking speed. You know, the big thing is he just got to continue to get a little bigger and stronger. I think like we saw, so he's not wearing, you know, a bionic arm and a bionic knee and doing all that stuff. But uh, I really think the sky's the limit for the guy. The only negative I really look at overall is just the frame. And I think, again, you know, we, we all know, us three, when you get older, you get bigger, right? That happens naturally. So I don't think he's going to have to work too hard at it. It should happen. Uh, but I think he's got superstar potential. There's no doubt. Chris, last one for me. You mentioned uh, the Colts quarterback. And I don't know if you didn't get prepped correctly, but we don't we don't say his name on the pod. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, just a, it's just a tradition. But Okay, um, sorry. Obviously, <laughs> <That's>, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> there's still a lot of interest in him here. Um, guy did some really good things here. Um, he did. Had some bad things. Is he salvageable? Is he fixable? What do you see from him right now? Well, yeah, I think he is salvageable and fixable, but it's it's delicate. I think it's a delicate spot right now where he's at. Uh, I think yeah, there's a little bit of uh, you know, I, I think he presses a little bit. He understands a little at times, you know, what the narrative is about him out there. 
I think he's too worried about trying to prove that wrong. You know, but ultimately, it, it's some of the things that I think all Philadelphia Eagles fans got frustrated with that you know, led to some of the issues with the Colts this year, which was, yeah, he didn't play his best football at times. There was games where you go, oh, wait, he didn't turn it over. It wasn't bad, but I would watch the film and go, but damn, what's he looking at? There's like four or five plays that would have been had in this game to where, you know, it would have switched the momentum of the game. And then, of course, what we saw, you know, a little bit towards the end of the year was some of those like, man, the play's over. Just go down. Get sacked. It's over. You have seven guys hanging on you. Why are you still trying to throw the ball down the field? And he, that, to me, is where I still am shocked that he hasn't kind of gotten that out of his game a little bit. Still too much of that last play of the game, I'm going to save the day mentality where it's just not necessary too much. And uh, I think between that, you know, and the, the fact that it wasn't the smoothest play throughout the year is why you have heard the Colts not 100% back him going into this offseason. Yeah, there was a lot of things familiar there. The last one, Chris, uh, Super Bowl. If you had to, to boil it down to maybe one big key in this game, what do you think it would be? Well, I think the biggest thing is the Rams pass rush against this Bengals offensive line. I don't think it's anything new. You guys are watching football, right? Yeah. I mean, this Bengals O-line got steamrolled by the Titans in the divisional round. Really, they were fortunate that Tannenhill and company made some mistakes. You know, they really got steamrolled against the Chiefs as well. Uh, Burrow made some great plays escaping it a few times. I think the scary thing is, you, know, you talk about the Chiefs D-line, you talk about the Titans D-line, they're real good, but they ain't the Rams D-line. The Rams D-line is the best pass rushing D-line in football. And that's where I just go, the Bengals got to have a serious plan for that aspect of the game. Because I think that Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, they could ruin the game. It better be quick, short passes, a lot of screens, you know, keep a tight end and a running back in to block when we do want to throw the ball down the field. But that, to me, has to be the number one priority and probably the number one thing I'm going to be watching in the game is just how the Bengals can handle that fearsome pass rush by the by the Los Angeles Rams. You can check him out on PFT Live and the Chris Sims Unbutton podcast on Twitter at CSimsQB. Chris, we appreciate the time. They know where to find me, Dave. They've been sending me hate <laughs> tweets all year about Jalen Hurts. They got it. <laughs> but no, always good to be with you guys. Enjoy the week, all right? Join the Thanks. club. <laughs> hey, yep, that's right. Join the club. See you guys. Take care, Chris. Thanks. Thanks Be good. Chris.